there is going to be stuff that I'm going to ask you to write down today, but it's not this. What I want you to do is just watch this first. Uh, we're going to introduce a new idea on how to calculate slope, and then we will be doing quite a bit of practice. The um, lesson we're going to do is introduce a new formula for calculating slope. And it's probably the second most formula, most important formula of the year. So we're going to want to make sure that we pay close attention and we're going to make sure I give you enough time to practice this today. So practice using the slope formula uh, and going from there. But first I'm going to talk about where it comes from and then we'll make a note on actually how to do it. Okay, so just watch this first and then we will uh, go from there. All right, so um, if we look at this example, uh, it says find the slope of the line connecting the points A, which is 1, 2, and B, which is 4, 7. So I'm going to start by just plotting the, those two points. So 1, 2 is right here, and 4, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is right there. That's B, and this is A, and if I drew a line connecting these, it looks something like this. Not bad, a little bit off. Better. All right. So when we have a graph, just based on what you practiced just now and what we did yesterday, if we have a graph and we have these points, calculating the slope is really easy. We're going to do the rise over run, and we just count. So from here, I'm going to count up one, two, three, four, five. So the rise is five, and the run, one, two, three, is three. So the slope is five over three. Okay, no problem. Um, but what if the question asked you this? What about the slope of the line connecting the point 1, 2 and the point 17, 3? Well, this becomes a bit more of an issue because 1, 2 is okay, it's right there, but 17, 3 is way off my graph. Like my graph only goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 17 would be someplace way over here and 3 would be something like this. And trying to draw this line or count this line is a little bit more difficult. You know, it's something like this. I'll move that little table here. Now, it's not outrageous to be able to do this, but you can see that counting on the graph then becomes a bit more of an issue. This point is 17.3. So if I was trying to do my slope triangle for this guy, let's make it purple, you know, go up here and then all the way down like this, it's not, you can't just count squares. So we need to have a better strategy for doing that. And a formula will help us kind of figure out what that strategy is. But even we go to a formula, we should be able to think for a second and see if we can figure out what the rise is, even though we can't count the rise. Well, the rise I think we might be able to count. But what do you think the rise is? Going from A to C, what do you think that rise is? Okay, I have one guess of two, a guess of one, So in order to try and figure out what the rise is, we need to look at the actual coordinates. So maybe if I wrote the coordinates down in this table that I just moved. If I wrote these coordinates down, I might be able to see it a bit better. So the A coordinate is 1, 2, and the new one is 17, 3. So which of these numbers 
talks about the rise. Is it the X coordinate or the Y coordinate that talks about the rise? The X coordinate or the Y coordinate talks about the rise. Yes, Keegan, it's the Y coordinate. That's right. So the Y coordinate tells us how high the graph is. Thanks, Lacey. And so now if I look at my table, the change in the Y is a change in one. Because I used to be at two right here, and apparently I'm going to go up to three. So I think the rise is only one. What's the run? Again, I can't count it. I try and count it and I run out of all these squares. So I have to be smarter than counting it. But what do we think the run is? Red says 16. And I agree with that because, yes, Keegan, because it is the X coordinate tells us about the run. And you see we're at one and we went all the way to 17. And you can see that right here. So the difference is 16. So the slope in this particular case is rise over run, one over 16, which is the same thing we did yesterday with the tables, right? Remember we had delta y over delta x? This is delta y over delta x the change in y over the change in x. And so if we have a situation where the graph is way, or the graph is not really an efficient way to calculate it, then we need some other strategy. And this formula right here, this delta y over delta x is maybe all you ever need. I'm gonna show you another formula that's going to, um, that we can use, but you can write this table out and do delta y and delta x all the time and it's going to work all the time as well and it's more efficient than having to do a graph okay um, let's look at this again we're going to look at the same things but we're going to calculate it then now instead of just just doing delta y for delta x so we're going to plot those points we're going to do that first one and we want to see if this delta y over delta x is going to work again. So there's A, 1, 2, and B was 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Draw our line. That really wasn't a great line. No. So we're going to do this. We already know, this is the same question. We already know that the slope for this green line is five over three. But we're gonna see if the delta y over delta x works for this. So again, I could just take these two coordinates and make a little grid. There's your x, there's your y. A is one, two, and B is four, seven. Does delta y over delta x work? Sure. Delta Y is how the Y changes, the change in the Y. And what is the change going from two to seven? That's right, five. And what is the Delta X, the change in the X? Three, good. And so if my slope is delta y over delta x, then I can get 5 over 3. And I never had to actually count the squares on the grid. Now, we already know that that's right if we count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 5 over 3. We can get the answer, but we want to be able to do this without having to graph it. And in fact, if we could do this whole thing without even drawing a graph, we're gonna save ourselves a lot of time and be able to find the slope pretty quickly just by doing delta y over delta x. So that is our first slope formula. Well, I guess it's our second because our first slope formula came from yesterday, rise over run. And we hinted at this one, delta y over delta x as a second one. 
And then there's a third one that I'm going to do that we can use as well. All right, and it's the official slope formula. So the official slope formula does this. Instead of looking at this specific question, I'm going to pretend that I have a general statement. So A is going to be x1, y1, and B is x2, y2. Now, those little notations I just wrote down, those are called subscripts. They're at the bottom of the variable. They are not exponents. And their exponents are superscript, they're up at the top. So when you see this x2, that's not x squared, that is x2. Subscripts are, are um, things that go on the bottom are used to label things. So when you see x2, it is simply referring to the x coordinate in the second point. And x1 is the x coordinate in the first point. So these numbers are labels, they're not math operations, okay? So what if I wanted to do delta y over delta x for this general case with these, these x's and y's? So let's try it. So the first coordinate is x1, y1. And the second coordinate is x2, y2. Let's try and use delta y over delta x. So let's think back to how we got 7 over 2. Or sorry, 7, how we got 5. How did we get this 5? Well, we took the number that you're on, which is 7, and you subtract where you started, which was two. So if we were to do that down here, the delta y would be the number we're on, which is y2, and we take away the number we began, which is y1. Over, now let's talk about how we came up with the three. The three, we were started at four, or sorry, we're on four now. Where did we start? We started at one. So we did four minus one. And so in this case, we're gonna do x2 minus x1. And we end up with this third type of formula to figure out the slope of a line. And really, it's just a fancy way to say, what is your change in y, your delta y, divided by your delta x? And now we've got another formula that we can use that may or may not be easier than doing the table part. Okay, and then I'm going to let you decide which strategy you want to use, but I'm going to show you all the different ways. So... As a result, we end up with these three different slope formulas, okay? Um, and may, maybe when we come back together in class, we'll make sure that we have this in our notes because it's so important. But it does show you the three different ones that we've done over these two days. The first yesterday being rise over run, and we hinted at delta y over delta x, but really saw how it's helpful right now. And then if you want to go off even further and go to a formula that says, how do you figure out the delta y, the change in y? Well, it's y2 minus y1. And how did you figure out the change in x? It's x2 minus x1. And we can end up with this third formula. And I'll show all three and how, or, or sorry, the last two there and how we can use it to what we're doing today. All right, so I just asked you to watch and follow along that. Now I'm going to ask you to do some writing. So let's get our notebooks out and make some, uh, make sure you copy down these questions. Because what I'm going to ask you to do is do a couple of questions like this for our homework. And this will be something that you'll be handing in. So having these example questions 
for you to copy from are going to be really valuable. So make sure we copy these down. And the point of today is to be able to find slopes without graphing. And if we had to graph this, we'd have to get our rulers out, plot the points, do all that sort of stuff, then count, rise, or run. We want to be able to do it without those points or without having to graph it. Okay, so I'm going to show you both methods and I'm going to let you decide which you prefer. So we're going to try and find the slope between the point A, which is 1, 2, and the point B, which is 10, 8. So first, let's try delta Y over delta X. So by drawing our little chart and saying there's the first coordinate is A, which is 1, 2, and the second coordinate is 10, 8. By just writing it in a quick little table, we can see the change in Y divided by the change in X pretty quickly. Can someone tell me what the delta Y is? I'm at two, or I'm, I'm at eight, and I was at two. That's right, it changes six. You can see that jump of six. Thank you, Keegan, Brad, Lacey. And how about the change in X? Yes, nine. And so the slope is six over nine. And remember, just like yesterday, when we have a fraction that can be reduced, we're going to reduce that um, to like 2 over 3. Perfect. Thank you, Brad. So that delta Y over delta X is a pretty quick way to find your slope. I'm going to show you the slope formula, the final slope formula method as well, and you can decide which you prefer. So the slope formula is y2, oops, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So these X2s and Y2s come straight from the top. So in this case, uh, this is X1, Y1, and this is X2, Y2. So if we're gonna do Y2, the top is eight minus, so there's Y2 minus Y1, which is two. And then the X, X2 is 10, X2 is, or X1 is 1, we do our subtraction, 8 minus 2 is 6, 10 minus 1 is 9, that of course reduces to 2 over 3. Okay, so just for curiosity's sake, can you in the chat tell me if you like the first method? So just type a one if you like the first method or two if you like the second method. All right. So it looks like most of us are liking that. Brad likes the third method. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, so I will do more of the first methods and less of the second method. So let's try the next one using the first method. So we're going to write down our coordinates in a little table. 
first coordinate is negative 3, 2, and the second coordinate is 4, 0. So in this one, finding our delta y and our delta x might be a little bit trickier. And this is where we got to be careful. So if I'm going from 2 to 0, first off, am I getting bigger or smaller going from 2 to 0? That's right, Ryland, we're getting smaller, going from two to zero. And so that means my difference or my delta y should be a negative number. So what's the delta y in this case? If I'm at two and I go to zero, that's right, ladies, negative two. Yes, Keegan, Ryland, good. So the change in y must mean that we are going down. Now, how about the change in X? This one looks very different. So negative three is over here and I have to go all the way to four. Yes, I see lots of people seeing that that's seven. So I'm at negative three, which is pretty small and I have to go all the way to four. That difference is seven. And so that means my slope is negative 2 over 7. I'm going to do the slope formula here to see if it helps with some of these more difficult ones. Uh, I'll, again, I'll let you decide if you want to do it. So the slope formula says y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So again, if I plug in my points, this is x1, y1, this is x2, y2. So I look at the y coordinates first, because that's the delta y. It goes zero minus two. And then the bottom is four minus minus three. as we're taking four and we're subtracting negative three. And that should sound familiar. Remember when we were doing these integers before together in class, when I said four minus minus three, what does four minus minus actually mean? Yes. And so you might change this to four plus three. And now the math I think it's pretty easy. Zero minus two is negative two, and four plus three is seven. So the advantage of this blue slope formula part is to help with the subtraction that has to take place. Because when you actually have to write down four minus minus three, it reminds you that it's plus. When people were figuring out this, the seven part, they were sort of figuring that in their head, saying, okay, I'm at four, what's the difference between negative three and four? So they actually probably did some adding there in order to see that the answer was seven. So in this second question, which do you like better? Do you like the first one or the second one? Second method. So the first one being the table, the second one being the equation. So I've got one vote for one, another vote for one, 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 one. Okay, all right. Sounds like one is the winner, so we'll do more of those. All right, let's try another one. So all that's happening in these next questions is the numbers are getting a little trickier. but I think we can figure it out.
delta y, that one's easy. If I'm at one and I go to four, what's delta y? Yep. Thanks, Keegan. And now this one, a little bit harder to see, but I'm at negative four and I go to negative three. Am I getting bigger or smaller if I go from negative four to negative three? Yeah, bigger. And how much bigger? One. And so that means my delta x is just one. And therefore, the slope is three over one. Now, I know yesterday we asked you to keep the formula or the uh, fraction as three over one so that the Desmos program could read it. I have no problem with you saying three over one is just three. We would rarely write three over one. We would just say the slope is three. The advantage of keeping three over one is you can then imagine the rise of three and the run of one. When you just see a slope of three, it's not quite as obvious the rise of three and the run of one. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna stick with the first method. Let's do some other ones then really quickly, just so that you're aware of some special cases. So there's three more here that's gonna take us only about a minute. Okay, you don't need to rewrite the formula that's, or the question, we're just gonna have three new questions. This is one we would have done up on the whiteboards if you were with us. Uh, we'll just do them quickly together here. Oh, wait, that's all right. <clears throat> all right, so the point goes from negative two, two to six, six. I'll give you a second to try this on your own. Tell me what the slope is. Okay, anyone have any answers in the chat? Ryland says two. I think Ryan's close. Keegan says a half. So it sounds like they're both on the same wavelength because one says two, which is two over one, and one says one over two. So let's actually find out. So delta and y going from two to six, that's a getting bigger by four. Going from negative two to six, though that's different. Negative two is down in the cold. And if I have to go to positive, six, that's a difference of eight. And I bet you everyone has this. What we just have to do is make sure we're careful when we reduce this. Four out of eight is a smaller fraction. If we divide both of them, it's going to be one over two. Don't get fooled and think that eight divided by four is two that then reduces to two. The smaller number is on the top. If it had read eight over four, then it would be two over one, okay? So make sure we don't make that mistake there. All right, so good. Looks like it's one half. These last two are kind of special. So one, one and four, one. If anyone has any guesses, they can put their guesses in the chat. Fred, I love that answer. 
you're actually doing the picture I'm going to do in a second. So what's the slope of what you just wrote in the chat? What's the slope of that? Yes, yes, yes. The slope is zero. Let's find out why. If I go from one to one, I haven't moved at all. So my rise is zero. The run is three, but zero over three is just zero. And Brad's already ahead of me thinking about what this picture would look like. One, one is right there. Four, one is right there. And so the difference, or the, the line that connects that is just a flat line. So if you remember from yesterday, the flat line is just zero. Okay, so this one has a slope of zero. And let's do the last one. Some of you might be predicting what this one's going to be. Brad's drawn his picture already. guesses of what the slope is in the last one? Brent says unknown. I think he's on to something. Undefined. Good. We're remembering some of the words from yesterday. There were two other ways you could describe it. Undefined. No slope. Doesn't exist. Remember, if you try to ski down this hill, you're not going to exist. Let's find out why. So the delta x, or the delta y, goes from 5 down to 3. So that's going down 2. But the delta x, there's no change in that. So if I do the slope, negative 2 over 0, are you allowed to divide by 0? No. You could try it. Go to your calculator, type in negative 2, divide by 0, you'll get an error. All right? So this one is the error, which means the slope is undefined. Or you could say no slope. Or you could say it doesn't exist. Excellent job.